What's going on, everybody? Dots Gaming from DotsGaming.com here, and on behalf of Nemesis Esports, I would like to bring you guys a Magic and Nightblade PvP build for the Elder Scrolls Online Mark Karth patch. So if you guys are familiar with my website, DotsGaming.com, you will have seen the Crimson Reaper PvP build for the Magic and Nightblade there up on my site. It is a vampire-focused Magblade build that deals a ton of damage, has a ton of mobility, really high maximum magic. Uh, it is just a very, very well-rounded build. Takes full advantage of the vampire skill line that came in the Greymore patch and has been an absolute blast to play. The build has really not changed very much from when I've created it to now. Just some small tweaks and optimizations over time. But I wanted to just bring you guys the updated version for the Mark Karth patch. Now, guys, like I always have said in my build videos in the past, though, this is just what I like, what I use, and what works for me. If you guys would like to change anything to suit your own needs or personal play style, you are obviously more than free to do so. But kicking off, we are going to start with our monster set and that is going to be two pieces of Zons. So whenever you deal damage to an, an enemy with a light or heavy attack, you have a 33% chance to create a beam of fire that will connect between you and your enemy, dealing damage over time for six seconds, and every second that this damage is dealt, it is increased by 100%. The beam is broken if the enemy moves away from you, and this could occur once every 18 seconds. So I am a firm believer in using damage-dealing monster sets for Magic and Nightblade. I think the class needs that little bit of extra punch that a proc set from your monster set provides um i've tried other builds in the past that didn't use the proc set and i've always found the proc sets to be a much better just because i felt that without them yeah a little bit of trouble finishing off some kills and so this kind of gives us the little bit of extra gas that we need and plus i don't really feel on this build that i need a defensive monster set just because i have plenty of defense via the size of my maximum magicka pool for shields and from the sheer mobility that this build has so i prefer the offensive monster set now we go for a full maximum magicka stack in this build because magic and nightblade is a classic can really take good advantage of stacking maximum magicka just through do its passives we also are able to use Necropotence really, really well due to the fact that we have a pet via the Summon Shade. And so I went for full maximum magic, especially because, you know, healing got nerfed pretty hard back in Graymore. And so having shields be a primary driver of your defense, I think is a really good thing for classes that can afford to do it. So like I said, Necropotence gives us three lines of maximum magicka. And while we have a pet active, which is our shade, we gain about another additional 30, 100 magicka. So when we combine that with a set like Crafty Elfique, which just gives us five straight lines of max mag, we're able to get really, really large magicka pools, which gives us good offense and good defense. And when we have our shade up, which we will at all times when we are playing, we are sitting at 53.6k maximum magicka, and that just spikes up to ridiculous amounts when we also pop our vampire ultimate on the back bar, which is my primary ultimate for the build. So, incredibly strong combination of gear. It's just very simple, very straightforward. Works really, really well, and has been working for me for patches, and is still continuing to, to work. Now, in terms of traits and all that stuff, though, we are running a two heavy and five light setup. Some people might be asking why I'm not choosing to run the extra medium piece for the extra maximum magicka because this is a magicka stack build. But honestly, I kind of find the extra piece of heavy really good for two reasons. Number one, it gives us more resistances and more heavy armor passives. But number two, we get extra benefit from the shadow barrier passive. Well, it gives us our major resolve buff for longer when we use a shadow skill. And it just makes it easier to maintain that buff on ourselves. So I do really, really like that. Um, if you do want to go for an even more offensive route, you feel free to go a 5-1-1, one, one, one heavy, one medium, and five light. But I'm choosing to run with a two heavy. I do run full imp pen on this. And again, a customization thing you can do is that if you don't want to run full imp pen, I would change two of these imp pen to well fitted. I do find myself dodge rolling a bit. So if you do feel that you want, to, you know, you're having a little bit of trouble with your stamina maintenance, feel free to chuck two well-fitted pieces onto the build. Um, in terms of enchants, I'm running triple prismatic on the big pieces, and I'm running a maximum magicka glyphs on the small pieces. Our jewelry is triple arcane, all magicka recovery. If you're another race that is not Breton, you're going to probably need to run um, uh, probably a sustain set here. I think you're able to kind of just get away running only magicka recovery glyphs because we're a Breton. You'll even see with the buff food that we have, uh, Breton providing a lot of cost reduction. 
It just we're gonna, able to get a lot of sustain purely from these recovery glyphs and being a Breton. And because we are going into a maximum Magicka stack, I don't really care too much about that spell damage. Uh, we also do have a sharpened Shock Glyph Inferno Staff on the front bar for the extra penetration with a defending Berserker Glyph on the back bar for extra defense. Now, in terms of our skills, we are, of course, using Swallow Soul for our spammable. It just deals instantaneous damage and heals us over time. Just gives us healing on the build, is a siphoning skill, so we get the passives from that line, and it just deals instant damage. So, great skill is your always go-to Magblade PvP spammable. We have Dark Cloak. Dark Cloak is going to be another one of our heals. It scales off our maximum health, which is actually a pretty respectable 26k. So we're able to get a pretty solid heal off of this. Plus, it does give us minor protection while it is healing us, reducing our damage taken by 5%. So it's our way to get minor protection on the build and offers another heal. We also have Merciless Resolve. Merciless Resolve lasts for 40 seconds and increases our critical damage by 2% for every light attack we deal up to 5 times. Um, critical damage and healing, excuse me. And then once this becomes active after we hit five light attacks, this will convert into Assassin's Will, allowing us to fire off the Spectral Bow to deal 19k magic damage for heal for 50% of her within melee range. So this is going to be our big primary burst skill. This is where going to be a lot of our damage is coming from. So you need to be sure that you're light attack weaving on point to make sure that you are getting this. We also do have Elemental Drain. Elemental Drain enables a ton of recovery for the build. The Minor Magicka Steel giving us about 340 Magicka recovery, but also we do get the Major Breach giving us uh, almost 6,000 penetration. So it's a great skill in terms of both offense and sustain. No reason not to run it on the build in my opinion. My little bit of flavor choice here is Hypnosis. I am using the Vampire CC. Subdue enemies around you with your Baleful Gaze, stunning them for five seconds if they're facing you, and this stun cannot be blocked. Now, if you do not like this stun, if you're like, I'm not a huge fan of it, it doesn't feel very good to use, I would recommend using Mass Hysteria. Um, I like Hypnosis, though, for the flavor of being the Vampire build. It's a lot cheaper than Mass Hysteria as well. Um, it's got, I think, a bit of a longer range. It's got an extra meter on the range. So it's a good skill. I like it admittedly sometimes it doesn't hit which is kind of a pain but i really like it for the flavor that it provides i'm using in cap on the front bar i use this very occasionally for the most part though we are using it for the reeve passive so while you're slotted you gain reeve which restores 100 magic and stamina when you deal damage with a lighter heavy attack on an enemy with a negative effect on them so we are able to get a ton of sustain from in cap and from Elemental Drain, totally outside our actual recovery stat. So it just allows us to get really, really good sustain on the build. Because we actually are running at Stage 3 Vampire. I know I was going to you know, probably get to this later, but since we're talking about sustain, I am running at Stage 3 Vampire because I would like the ability to get on Death to reduce our damage taken by up to 30% based on your missing health. Stage 4 is completely unnecessary in my opinion. Um, you can go to stage four if you want to, because I actually do not run stealth on this build. So if you do want a way to get stealth, you absolutely could go to stage four. But personally, I don't like the drawback for just simply being able to get stealth after sprinting for six seconds. I don't run stamina potions on this build. I would rather use my stamina for CC break and dodge rolling anyway. When I need to move quickly, I use mist form. So I just find stage three to be the best area to sit at because on death is really good. Trike from the shadows is really good. Um, and then obviously just dark stalkers, just whatever, but I find stage three to be really good on the build. So running Breton to kind of offset that cost increase, um, which is, is almost completely offsets it, which is fantastic. And then getting the extra sustain from in-cap and Ellie drain. It's just absolutely fantastic. Now on our back bar, the defensive bar, we are using what I discussed earlier, damp and magic. This is our primary shield for the build. And the reason I go into the max magicka stack gives us a nice juicy shield, um, increases for pieces of light armor worn. It is just a really, really strong defensive skill to have. We're also running Shadow Image. Shadow Image is one of our mobility tools, one of our two mobility tools on the build. This also gives us a magical dot on our enemies, uh, but gives them minor maim, which reduces their damage done by 5% every time the shade strikes it for four seconds. And now the cool thing is, is that when you place the shade down, you can basically run a certain distance from it. And then if you're you know up here fighting and you're like, oh crap, things are bad, you can just port right back to it. So between the ability to port to the shade and then also having elusive mist, dissolve into a dark mist, reducing your damage taken by 75% and granting you major expedition, increase your movement speed by 30% as long as you maintain the channel. And this also removes and grants immunity to immunity, or excuse me, to disable and immobilization effects. So between the ability to just 
teleport back and then go into mist form, you are able to be extremely mobile and really, really escape people. And then you can simply just heal yourself up when you get out of range with rapid regen, giving us a massive tooltip, 22k healing over five seconds. So you're just able to get a lot. You're able to get a lot of effective tankiness just between dampened magic and rapid regen but also just the absolutely insane mobility that this build has via Shadow Image and Elusive Mist. Our final skill to round up our normal skills on the back bar is going to be Siphoning Attacks, again, giving us more effective sustain, giving us 1,600 health and restoring Magicka every time we land a Light Attack. Fully Charge Heavy Attacks will restore double that, and then we'll restore 4,200 Magicka when the effect ends based on the length that this was active. So as you can see, we have a lot of healing coming in over time from Swallow Soul. We got Dark Cloak. We got Rapid Regen. We have a Shield to protect it all. We have Damage Mitigation via Shadow Image and via Dark cloak we have also healing coming in from siphoning attacks we have mobility from elusive mist and dark cloak we have sustain coming in from ellie drain and in cap as well as siphoning attacks we get a lot of various stuff from our skills which is why we were able to afford to run such an offensive gear setup so really been liking this skill loadout it's been working really really well for me and then finally the big boy ultimate on the back bar is swarming scion so swarming scion will transform us into a vampire lord giving us an additional 10k max health magicka and stamina healing us for 16 percent of all damage dealt we can see enemies through walls and we have a bat swarm around us dealing 2800 damage per second now this is a more than 10,000 stamina and magic and health because you also have to take passives into account so our stats get insanely high when we pop this we deal a ton of damage when we are in this form it is super super fun absolutely recommend it really enjoyable skill you know obviously if you want something cheaper you can run something cheaper but i really really have been enjoying swarming scion on the build it's a bit expensive but when you pop it man you deal a lot of damage now, in terms of other stuff that we have on the build, uh, we have Breton, like I said, for the race. I really like Breton to offset the cost increase that um, Vampirism gives us. If you don't want to run Breton, you can. I would probably recommend Dark Elf as my secondary option, but you are you might need to adjust the jewelry glyphs a little bit to kind of increase uh, you know increase your cost reduction. But personally, I find Breton to be really really good for this build. We go 64 into maximum magicka. We have, like I said, 50k max magic to base. This goes up to uh, 53.6 with our shade up. 26k maximum health, 16.7k maximum stam, 1670 magicka recovery with when we pop our potion. We have 42.6% spell critical, uh, 1600 spell damage with the potion pop because we are running spell power potions. Um, we are running the spell power. Major Sorcery Potions, Major Prophecy for the Crit, and then Restore Magicka with Major Intellect. Uh, we have 14.5k Spell Resist with 10.5k uh, Physical Resist, which goes up to 17.8 on the back bar, and 13.7 with about 2,900 Critical Resistance. We obviously are running the Mage Mundus for our Maximum Magicka stack. We are using the Bewitched Sugar Skulls buff food. That's one of the great things about also being a Breton, is you're able to run Tri-Staff food to give us really, really strong Maximum stats. One of the great things about being a Breton, so we're able to get that huge boost to max health stats damage magicka granted the health recovery basically goes to waste because we're a vampire but it doesn't really matter it gives us the most of those other three stats compared to any other buff food in the game uh in terms of champion points we have 27 into blessed 48 into elfborn 56 into ellie expert and 46 into spell erosion 72 into master at arms 21 into staff expert and nothing in the thaumaturge 66 into ironclad 24 into resistant 44 into Thick Skin, 49 into Hardy, 43 into Ellie Defender, and 44 into Bastion. 1 into Siphoner, 72 into Warlord, 75 into Arcanist, 27 into Tenacity, 72 into Tumbling, and 23 into Shadow Ward. I go really high into Tumbling on this build because I do like to dodge roll in it, so that is super helpful. Now, in terms of actually playing the build, you want to maintain Merciless Resolve at all times so that you're gaining as much effect of the Spectral Blow as possible. Maintain Elemental Drain on your opponents. Maintain your Shade. Super important because without this, you will not be getting the Necropotence buff. And also maintain Siphoning Attack. So you got two things per bar to maintain. Besides that, you really want to just Light Attack and Weave with Swallow's Soul. When you're ready to go into your Burst, 
you can try to hit them with hypnosis and then go into your assassin's will and that's going to be a huge portion of your burst and if you do that when zon's procs as well you're going to be dealing a ludicrous amount of damage uh whenever you get swarming scion pop it and go through your normal rotation you'll be super super strong super tanky deal a lot of damage while you're in this form um this could also be good if you're low on hp to heal yourself up back to full because it does instantly restore you to full health so do keep that in mind and like i did mention earlier defensively make sure your shade is in a is in a good spot that's easy for you to kite back to and you you know allows you to get away from your enemy you know simply you know shield and heal yourself but if you really really need to get away you port back to the shade mist form to safety and then go into the shield and the heal when you're safely away. But guys, I think on that note, that's pretty much going to be it for me on the updated Crimson Reaper build for the Markarth patch. Very straightforward build, works really, really well, and I do enjoy it a lot. And if you guys did enjoy this build, feel free to smack a like on the video. If you guys want to check out the written version of this build and other ESO content, you can find it over on DotsGaming.com. If you guys would like to see more from the Nemesis Esports channel, I will be releasing more build videos here, as well as they have other great gaming content that comes out here. You can feel free to hit that subscribe button. And I believe they will be doing a giveaway away from mark karth at some point so check the description pinned comments those areas in case that is there so thank you guys for stopping by today's video i appreciate it as always i'm dots gaming i'll see you guys next time